Okay, okay. Hello, folks. Hello, hello. We are not yet recording, so bear with me while I will be preparing for the recording. And for everyone who joined live, you kind of have this nice opportunity, you know, if you want to actually go and ask some questions. If you're asking where to ask question, YouTube, YouTube, you can put a comment, but more useful would be to go on the Discord and ask a question on our Sovereign Shadow Leadership Club Discord. Ask there. Okay, several topics has been uh, prepared. I'm actually ready to start recording, folks, so give me one second. There is so many shit have have went this week. Oh, man, I don't even know. Yeah, we'll probably... Anyway, let's start recording. We can chat with together, folks, later about what we going to cover. Almost ready. Three, two, one, let's go. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to the Non-Intuitive Beats podcast brought to you by the Leaders Club that you are part of if you're listening to us, but do consider inviting your club membership status by joining the Discord channel. We actually do do actively answering the questions there. So you can ask us something, post the questions for the future podcast, you know, and just hang out. We actually periodically do have a live games with Dimitri, where we do play live with the audio channel there. We do speak on non-English language, so beware if you don't want to join. And honestly, we're just communicating there through the game. We're not yet streaming, but I think it's a good idea at some point to start streaming the game. We recently have started playing finals. Now, that being said, Dmitry has a very, very reasonable excuse not to show up for several recordings. I actually do not know how soon he will be joining us. Definitely not yet today. Maybe next time. I honestly don't know. Uh, but I will keep keep broadcasting for now on the same setup, joining the meets, even though no one is joining there yet. Uh, just because I want to share the screen, I want to keep... keep uh, everything going the same way it used to be. Honestly, the week has been crazy. It's like <laughs> such a crazy week. Open AI drama where people are, are uh, shared so many things left and right already. I just want, you know, among one, I, I just want to remind you one thing. Let me open my Twitter. I have published this recently. Absolutely no reason why I bring this up today. Jesus, I cannot even view the tweets without logging in. Okay, let me open it on the site. But absolutely no reason to bring this actually today. But everything that have happened remind me that in 2019, Sam Altman was fired from the YC Combinator because he put, according to the reasons, he put his interests uh, way above the company interests. I don't know, maybe it's somehow related to the current situation, maybe not. Another, you know, small thing that I wanted to mention before we'll jump uh, to the set of main topics. Andre Carpati, which is quite famous in the AI world, if you are actually not from the AI world, recently have put an amazing video that describe in depth how LLM, which is large language models, things like uh, ChatGPT uh, or Cloud, are actually working under the hood. Uh, very, very down to the ground, so to speak, simply described. So if you actually want to understand how the brain of uh, our future masters will, will work, and actually it works already, uh, highly suggest, highly suggest. Uh, so LLM one-on-one, -on -one, so to speak. 
one hour talk is slightly less than one hour um yeah so the small topics that's probably i'm trying to 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 look at my notes there is small things here and there that i really like and want to show and um, you know just making sure that i have not forgot anything no it's uh, it's uh, feels feels that this was it Okay, I have watched that amazing episode of South Park. Promise, this is the last topic before the main one. I do promise. <laughs> so, uh, let me double check how, how is the uh, broadcast going before we moving forward. Yeah, broadcast is fine. So, um, uh, from the last uh, last time, I tried to play music to you folks and actually got banned on the Facebook uh, for playing it and I got, got banned... Uh, on the YouTube, on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube doing the nice things. It tells you, okay, you have a strike. Uh, this copyright strike on the starting minute blah, ending minute blah, and one button, mute this section. Just clicking on it, it's auto mute the section on and then on releasing your video and your video can be viewed again. Since I don't care about monetization for this video, so the only thing that I did care is uh, the fact that it's viewable and watchable. So I had to mute some part of the song and specifically here and there, uh, he here and there, right? Uh, the, the Beatles one, the one from the Beatles. So I'm not going to try to, to do exactly the same thing again, but uh, I have watched the new South Park special. I don't remember if I told on the show or not. First of all, I, I overall enjoying South Park. It's uh, it's an amazing show, but there is South Park pon uh, joining Ponderverse special. So this is a special episode of the South Park. And uh, first of all, I would highly recommend this because it's mocking uh, the modern Hollywood culture that spreads out according to the Hollywood. And there is so many different angles there. It's just, just amazing to watch. I will play one short, short part of it that I also found on YouTube. Hopefully it's okay. But you know, in order to illustrate many, many hilarious things in this episode, uh, inside you will find uh, the CEO of, of, of Disney. So in South Park, right, they have this character, CEO of Disney. And that character is a she, and she's constantly saying one thing uh, about any movies. Put a chicken in it and make her gay and lame. This is the thing. It doesn't matter what the movie is, Bambi or anything. She would come in and say, put a chicken in it, make her gay and lame. Uh, let me actually show it to you how it looks like. Put a chicken in it. And make it lame and gay, gay and lame. Uh, let me find something here. Here it goes. Yeah, let's watch because this is on YouTube. Hopefully, I'm not going to be banned. Wait, 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 wait. Audio, audio. Just wait for it. Is there a problem, people? No problem at all, Mrs. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a chick in it. Make her gay. Well, then maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Fuck Indiana Jones! Put a chicken in and make her name it gay! Any diverse woman in it, make it gay! But, Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer! Fuck baby deer! Put a chicken in make her gay! Name it gay! There you are, Miss Kennedy, the linguine and clam sauce. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chicken in this and make her gay? Uh, yes, the chef was a little confused what you meant by that. It means put a chick in the linguine and make her fucking gay! So, yes, that's, that's the gist of it, but, but you know, this is just one of the parts of the, the, of the episode. It's just hilarious. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to go and watch it. It's just hilarious. Okay, okay, let me, uh, let me quickly find... Uh, find what I want to find is uh, several links on my next topics. And today I'm going to talk with you folks about my personal assistant. I'm actually going to do a live demo. So for quite some time I've been developing a personal assistant in many shapes of forms and I have to develop many GPTs based on the secret prompt, secret quote unquote prompt for the personal assistant. And recently uh, by the way, why I'm doing things is why, why? Let's start with the problem. Why I'm doing personal assistant? First of all, several reasons. Uh, my home assistant is actually Google Home. It's everywhere, everything connected to Google Home, but it's not as smart as you want personal assistant to be. That's, that's very, very, very annoying. It's not enough. And the second 
One second. And uh, the second reason, even if you want to extend something and it, there used to be a way, a way to do so, it used to be in actions. You can have conversational actions when you can add something. So you actually can create your own assistant, then ask Google Home to talk to your own assistant. And then you're effectively kind of giving, getting microphone and a speaker, but you can talk to your own assistant in your own way. Uh, or you can implement different functionality because default assistant can only can do only so much. I cannot easily, for example, integrate it with um, Things. It's my Todo app. I highly recommend if you never use use Things to try it out, or with OmniFocus, or with something else. So integration was really lame. There was not that many providers that would do this integration the right way. And recently, if you have watched OpenAI Day, the OpenAI Dev Day, uh, because all my personal assistants are obviously ChatGPT based, uh, we already covered this this specific event. But I want to recover one specific part. They have introduced what is known as Assistant API. So Assistant API is effectively allows you to implement your own assistant based on ChatGPT. So in this specific case, they demonstrate how they chatting with the assistant, but they did a completely custom UI. And then ChatGPT responds to this UI and actually doing some changes, in this case, on the map. So uh, the guy is asking something about the point of interest, the ChatGPT responds, and then updating something in the map. So effectively, it uh, allows you to integrate ChatGPT into your own APIs that you have. Uh, like building a brain on your API, so to speak. And uh, if you think about this, this actually allows you to recreate any type of UI you want with having GPT brain behind it. And this is exactly what I did because this is exactly what I needed to do. And I created my personal assistant, Jessica. Let me start showing you what current revision actually can. Then I'm going to let me open the plan. So we'll tell you uh, what it can today already. I will tell you what are the next features. I will give you some high level overview of how you can contribute if you want. And obviously I will tell you how to deploy it if you actually like what you see. So there's going to be a live demo. Jessica is fully based on the Telegram right now. Not that I actually admire or like that, that platform. I actually hate it. But even though I hate Telegram, it's... Uh, Decent alternative to I forgot what the Chinese uh, Chinese platform. Uh, anyway, tele, uh, chat as a platform is a concept that's been developed in China and now with Telegram. Uh, let me show it to you. So someone will help me to create UI outside of Telegram. I would greatly appreciate it. But let me tell you what uh, what uh, it can do today. So first of all, this is a chat GPT in a sense that uh, you can ask with it anything that you would ask normal chat GPT. Let me, let me show it to you. Um, there will be a delay in the sense that you're asking and the question will become later. I will actually implement logic that shows a spinning wheel or something, but for now there is nothing. Uh, okay, let me talk to Jessica. I'm actually going, uh, going to show uh, a live demo of your abilities. Uh, so for everyone who's listening right now, I'm showing the live demo through the Telegram chatting to the Jessica. Uh, what you actually can do. Okay, so ask her what she can do. Uh, maybe she will tell. Uh, otherwise, I will have to vocalize. Uh, very, very, very stupid answer. So she's answered. Hello, lovely to hear from you. What can I do for you today? Um, what are your integrations let's ask this way maybe she'll understand better i am asking her about the integrations but let's see uh, hmm interesting um can you tell me a joke i promise after this i will start uh, i will start asking it something more funnier actually this might be a bug <laughs> Maybe it just doesn't work. Um, yeah, looks like looks like it's actually broken. I'm really sorry, folks, but it turns out it's actually actually broken. Uh, let me ask you what uh, date it is. Uh, that's you know classic uh, classic uh, classic. Uh, 
classic what? Classic gods of demos. So, <laughs> one second, I actually, actually going to uh, change something and do a live deployment, live deployment of the fix right now. So, uh, here is the problem. Here is the problem. I literally have deployed the logic that uh, instead of passing my message was actually passing uh, passing an empty text. So she does see that text is coming in, but she's not responding responding properly. While I'm do deployment live to the production, hopefully this is fix shit, uh, as if uh, live deployment to prod uh, anytime fixes anything. But nevertheless, um, while I'm doing so, let me tell you which integrations I actually Jessica has. So first of all, uh, she is proactive. What I mean uh, by proactive is she can message you and not only you can message her. So in chat GPT, one of the biggest problems, it's one sided conversation. The chat is alive as long as you're asking questions. So this actually completely um, uh, killing the human touch. You no longer perceive your GPT is, is someone who actually alive because that someone doesn't do anything proactively. So unlike that, Jessica is actually can be very proactive. Uh, she can message you on the telegram at random point. Uh, so yes, that is there. And I'm going to show it to you how it looks like uh, in just a several moments. Then she actually have a long term memory and I also will show that uh, that demo. So unlike and I'm not speaking about the chat uh, messages that's that you will have in chat GPT, you know, when the, the chat GPT has a context of the chat. No, no, I'm not speaking about that. I'm specifically speaking about long term memory where she can memorize fact about you. What's your date of birthday? Where do you work? What's your current uh, situation with uh, with um, physical activities like writing? jogging um yes so live deployment succeeded let me try again i will clear the chat history completely click start let's see what's going to happen um okay hi how are you let me ask again what uh, integrations do you have so i'm asking the jessica about the integration specifically because i want you, her to comprehend and tell me what exactly she have in store for us perfect she's working so so here's what she has scattering message feature delivering storing and retaining information long-term memory accessing and managing google calendar executive bash comments on my computer with my explicit permissions uh, there is actually a little bit more action that happening today but i like how he she summarized what you have so message right i s told you that i will show it to you obviously i'm not going to wait for example two hours or three hours or a day when jessica will decide to actually tell something instead there is special comment implemented just for this demo we can ask Jessica okay show me what you want us to 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 say and uh, for everyone who listening not watching live uh, she wants to say just checking to see how are you doing is there anything I'd like to discuss or need my help I'm here to help and the date is effectively two day no actually two more or 3 a.m. at night and that's a good idea to ping at night but nevertheless she decided to ping at night uh, next time if I'm not responding first now, long-term memory, let me ask you, this is, as you, as you can see, this is an empty chat, actually completely have killed the backend, so there is nothing in memory on the, in the context, so to speak. So in the empty chat, I'm going to ask, what do you know about me? So I explicitly want her to go to the database and, and query some, some facts from there, and I'm using VectorDB, so I, you, you're not always even sure what exactly will be the question to the database, what she will query, and there is no loading indicator right now, but I'm working on that so uh, here you go she knows that I'm in PhD time zone I have programming uh, some background programming with docker uh, I have synology uh, server and I use Mac uh, I have a leadership role leading team tech environment professional communication strategy blah 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 10 years of professional experience in technology over the yeah, yeah, yeah ML ops a significant project cruise by touch foundation cloud AI uh, GCB blah 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 background large-scale distributed ops email she knows my email uh, you have a lot of experience in your knowledge did they miss anything um, 
Actually, I will tell her I want you to memorize that I have my own podcast, uh, The Non Intuitive Beats. Uh, so now she's actually going to store it in the memory. And you don't, you don't actually have to say to her, I want you to memorize, but she deciding when she wants to memorize something, she will. But if you actually want her to know something, you always can, can, can say something, blah, please memorize it, and she obviously will memorize it. At any point of time, she can decide to ask a memory question. So she can go to the memory, ask a question, figure out the answer, and then go back if she thinks that something you're discussing might be in the memory. You always can give a hint on her and say, say okay. Uh, and say that oh you you want you need uh, her to recall something. The next part is uh, Google Calendar. So you she actually has already today the access to Google Calendar. So I can say something. Uh, can you please uh, create um, an invite with Nikita uh, with Nikita and title uh, test invite ignore for tomorrow 3 p.m. So she's going to actually create that and send to Nikita. Unfortunately, right now, she doesn't have access to the address book and she doesn't have access to uh, address book or to, 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 to um, some of the event calendar at APIs. Uh, I've created a calendar in why it just ignore tomorrow. Nikita has been added as invitee. You see, she's not asking email of the Nikita. This is why I already sent several invites to Nikita in the past. So she probably under the hood. Obviously, I don't know. I need to go to check the logs. Went to the database, asked Nikita's email, checked the email, found the email address, and sent that that invite. I'm going to not going to share it uh, on you on the screen, but I'm going to see my email and yes the email the invite went out uh let me open the calendar tomorrow i want to, to see yes i see it in my calendar it is there that just just perfect test and white ignore nikita is there just hilarious that's just amazing 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 okay so this is uh this is what we have in store today and now, as I have promised, I will tell you why I created what I created. Uh, just a brief review of the next feature, right? What I'm planning to do. Much better user interface, much better Google Calendar integration. It now can create the invite and list several invites. Uh, let me see. You can ask us about what my next three invites. I don't want to be asking it right now, but it cannot edit. It cannot query, it cannot search, it cannot uh, delete. So it cannot do a lot of stuff with the calendar just yet. I'm going to change that. Uh, I'm going to give it access to my to-do list of things. I'm going to give it access to my Gmail so it can write, uh, maybe send emails to, to people and friends. And one thing that does not work yet, it's actually almost working, but I'm not ready to show it. It's actually capable of executing command on my local Mac. So whenever my Mac go, goes online, there is a special agent that have a bi-directional connection between uh, GS that's running on my server and my Mac OS. And I can say to her, you know, can you delete all the screenshot on my desktop that is more than two months old? And she will actually go and do this. Or like, can you create a job on my Basher C that will be doing it weekly? And she will go and do it. Uh, so you can actually ask her to do something in a machine and she will be doing that. Uh, that's more or less a planned uh, future action. Now, let me tell you how to deploy. And for that, I need to change the sharing screen for everyone who do do joining us live. I'm going to stop. I'm going to present a different window uh, with a Firefox. And I'm going to open the repository because, and here is the important part, this is not a service that you can easily use on your own in a sense that uh, it's self-hosted. So this is not a publicly available chatbot that you can just use. It's not going to respond to you. You maybe will figure out how to talk to it. It's going to ignore and don't do anything for you. You have to deploy it. So uh, repository is this one, uh, proactive just because it just started with a proactiveness, right? And now, now effectively, this is a full blown out, out project with way more things than, than this one. So this is a project. It's actually very simple to deploy it. You have to create uh, two files, .env. 
inside of the dot env you have to provide telegram token telegram token is um, is 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 vector token of your chatbot you need to go to telegram create a chatbot it will give you tokens very simple process you just need to talk to one chatbot uh this is important second important part you have to have telegram chat id this is your id so this is id that it will use to make sure that only messages to you and from you will be recognized and responded to so it's not going to work if you will not provide that uh, there is different ways uh, how you can obtain this but in a simple way you actually can put random stuff here you can create everything else then you can go and use the command the bot has the command get chat id so you can use the command get chat id and uh, it will tell you your chat ID. Uh, then you will need open API key. Uh, the open API key, obviously, because it talks to talking to chat GPT, so you will have to pay to to, to everything that it does. Uh, user ID. This is just random user ID that's used in many, many different places. Literally, you can generate whatever you want. Pinecon key is a Pinecon DB. You will have to register there, get the key. It's a free DB. It has a free instance. You don't have to use anything except the free instance. Actually, I'm not ever sure if it will work with anything else. Uh, and just provide the key here. This is where it's going to store long-term memory. And last but not least, you will have to create a crest.json. This is credentials for Google. You will have to create a GCP project, create these credentials with your personal token. Uh, then you find that it can test. And when everything is ready, um, you can see any deployment file. I have a deployment file here, which is a very, very simple setup where you're just literally running build and then running the container. Nothing else you need to do. Run build, run the container. If your .env is uh, correctly configured, uh let me check uh, let me actually show you the build uh if your um if your docker container and your env variable is correctly configured you just literally need to build a docker container run it whenever you want i i run it in my personal server it's uh, pulling running the agent now how you can contribute well there are many, many things. If you want to do prompt engineering, there is a Jessica prompt. Uh, feel free to play with it, to update it in any part you want. There is obviously many bug features. I highly uh, recommend you uh, how to, to, to work with it, what to do, how to update the config, what to do with the config. So there is many things that, that you can try and play and do with it. Uh, whatever you do not understand, just create a feature, assign it to me, and I probably will, will help. So give it a spin, give it a try. That's the main thing. Uh, then um, uh, community on the Discord, just feel free to join the Discord. Um, obviously, you can feel free to change anything you want. But I also will tell you extensions. Extension, this is how you're extending the functionality. This is a magic source. This is a source of how you are uh, creating additional functionality that will be available to Jessica. So if you want to extend the functionality, this is what you need to do. And I'll explain how to do it. It's actually very, very simple. So let me show you. One of the extension that Jessica is having is effectively uh, access to current date time because obviously ChatGPT doesn't have notion of what the current time right now precisely, but at the time it might need to do this information. So this is a very simple extension that gives this information to Jessica. Extensions look like this: you're creating any function. And then uh, there is a special annotation, Python annotation that you're applying, just extension. And there you just need to provide description why Jessica might need this particular API and description of the parameters. Your function should return something, not something, string. If it's only doing a one-time action, it doesn't actually return anything, return string done. So the Jessica will know that your method actually have completed successfully. There is no error. It's, three, it's always should be string. In this case, uh, obviously, for the getting current day time, just using day time converted to the readable format and returning back to the Jessica. But here is another example of the memory. Um, Long-term memory, it's obviously have a class, the full class. And inside of the class, you will find the annotated functions. 
So annotated functions, uh, here's a good example, a description and the parameter description. Now, each parameter need to have a type. This type need to be explicitly sp spelled out uh, inside of the function. And in this example, when I'm storing something, because store doesn't technically return anything, it's just finishing the storing. So it's returned uh, the word done. Exactly how, uh, how I... Met, uh, how I uh, exactly what i told to you in the sense that if you don't know what to return just return uh, string done uh, and the moment that you let's say you implemented a new extension you created the pull request first of all i want to make sure that a you created the tests and many of my extensions are without tests. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to accept PRs with, uh, without the tests. Make sure that you have added requ updated requirements TXT and everything that you actually need is there. Make sure they have tests, make sure they have annotations. And then the last step, you need to add it to the list of the extensions. And that's it. Send the PR my way. I will update the PR. I will I will accept it or 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 um, uh, or not, depending on on what is missing. But this is a way how you can actually we all can build together by providing more and more extensions, and the users can actually use a special config. Uh, to disable and enable them. So even if you have a very, very unique extension that requires tons of this stuff, you always can just disable it. You do, the people, the user, they don't have to have it enabled all the time. Uh, so, so far there is four extensions that are already available there. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's all. What I'm planning to do is uh, and let's do it live i'm planning now to build or find some box uh smart assistant speaker find some box like google home in which um the client can be put in uh because right now it's only through the telegram i actually would prefer to have something way more interesting so let's do a live source so what is available there um and to be fair, I have found only tons of the stuff like uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, but do it yourself, so to speak. And this is very, very um, unfortunate. <laughs> I, I, I really hate it. Um, I probably won't be able to to find it to find it fast. Uh, that's that's really unfortunate. So I found this, you know, uh, Minecraft AI. Uh, I don't know what is Minecraft AI. Uh, yeah, with Minecraft, Minecraft AI. What is that? Okay, so the Minecraft AI uh, looks like very very close to what I want or need. Open source model machines can be can be ported to your device or environment at any price point. So looks like this is exactly what you can install on um, uh, on one of the devices. I'm not entirely sure if you can extend it. So this is what interests for me. Uh, how can I extend it? Uh, and extend it in a sense. Uh, how can I add? Um, uh, how can I add my own comments? So I, I literally wanted to to be able to reply on the specific uh, specific uh, word like "Hey, blah," and then in the rest I don't care. I need to recognize the voice and send it to uh, Jessica Beckham. That's all I need. And I'm not entirely sure how to do it. Honestly, I probably will do my homework right after this podcast recording, and then maybe we'll report back uh, when I can when I can in the future. Uh, but yeah, this probably all is available out there. Not many, not much. We have a Google project. Uh, it's called uh, a AIY project. Yeah, AIY, AIY, like DUI. Uh, it has TPU edge, but uh, this this stuff has been discontinued. I don't know what the analogies, analogs of this project there out there in the wild. So yeah, not sure, not sure. Okay, next time maybe I will report back to you folks and I will tell you what I have found. But with that, this is actually all. I'm going to pause here, stop. I don't have too many other topics. I want to say thank you to everyone for coming. This was a pleasure talking to all of you. 
Have an amazing rest of the day. And by the way, I hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving. And I will talk to you all next time. Same place. Meanwhile, go and play with Jessica. Go and play with Jessica. I dare you. And I also will have a very detailed video how to deploy it. Because right now, maybe you're listening on the podcast. It will be video pre-recording with tons of the details that I cannot show live. Because I can accidentally show you some tokens or something that I should not. So obviously pre-recorded, uh, cleaned up. Uh, pre-edited i will publish it on youtube you can watch it deploy it play with it and tell me what you think and with that thank you folks i will talk to you same place same time next week Okay, we have finished, as usually, folks, even though we have finished, I'm going to render it, and I'm going to stick around for a little bit of time, just for the sake of looking if anyone have joined of after show. Time to time, we do have people joining it. And as usual, rendering in two stages, uh, rendering of much higher quality, whoa, that happens first, then slightly lower quality MP3, that happens second, because MP3 I'm using for converting uh, speech to text, and that obviously then sent to ChatGPT to create, uh, you know, uh, show notes, show notes. One second, folks. Meanwhile, if you want, you can ask me some questions. You know, if you want. Okay, rendering. Uploading a file. You know, uh, I... You know how I love uh, Alan Wake. So I'll keep telling you about Alan Wake 2. Uh, there is this part in the game, uh, it's actually in the control game, where you are playing and there is a background music, like really nice music that is playing. And uh, the music actually changes as you progress through the level. So in Alan Wake 2, they took the same idea and went even one step further. It's actually much, much uh, more amazing in Alan Wake 2. There is same idea where you where you have a level with uh, uh, level with uh, music, and music changes uh, as you progress. So effectively, everything the same shit going on, and it's just amazing. I cannot emphasize how good it is. So, you know, you're, you're biased. I, I really love Alan Wake, so... Here you go. Okay. Come on. Yeah, I'm trying to do this, but there is some problems. This is why my, I hate when I don't use virtual environment. So the thing is that uh, I have a graded OpenAI in my system, OpenAI client, and um, I have updated it. Jesus. But... Even though I have updated it, uh, the, I have tons of the old code. And the podcast transcriber is exactly the, the example of the old code. So while it's doing the transcribing sheet. Uh, you know what? I'm going to play you the, the music from Alan Wake on post-show. 
maybe maybe not uh, if they will ban me so be it I don't care I don't care because um, I seem seeing this this on so many different YouTube videos and this is already post show so like there is nothing interesting here anyway but you might hear so some spoilers some spoilers Searching, searching. I'm here, I'm here. Just give me a sec. Okay. Now the quality is bad here. Okay, let me find something. I will I will start right in the middle. What a savior from the darkness of the lake. Show me the champion of light. Oh, I'll show you the air. Okay, folks, I'm going to stop here. Thank you, everyone, for watching me. Have an amazing rest of the day and the week. See you.